Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to this special edition of presented by D. Thomas Miniatures. I don't know, it's not a Meet the Miniatures. I'm usually, I'm, I'm used to calling it a, a Meet the Miniatures, but it isn't. Um, but welcome, if you are joining, you are here for the, um, we're gonna talk about how best practices for participating in an online, online auction which I have coming up next weekend. So countdown begins now, seven day, one week countdown to uh, the auction. Um, but we're also here to talk about how to spot a fine miniature. So they all both sort of go together. So as you're joining, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating. Thank you for your interest. Um, so like I said, we're gonna be talking about um, best practices for being involved in an online auction. For folks who have never actually been involved in an online auction, um, maybe you wanna brush up your skills. Maybe there's something you could learn that's kind of new. Um, and then of course, we're gonna talk about how to spot a miniature, a really fine miniature, which helps you um, be successful in an online auction. So with that, um, again, I would welcome you. I will welcome you and thank you for joining. And if you wouldn't mind, the chat box is opened. Say hello in the chat box. Tell me where you're joining from. Tell me why you're here. Um, are you bidding on this auction? Are you just curious? Do you wanna just brush up, up on some skills? Do you wanna just learn something new? Um, definitely, I'd love to hear from you. Like, where do you, where are you guys, um, where are you coming from in this whole scheme of things of online auctions and all that? Hey, Jolene, good to see you out of Oakland. Um, brushing up, good, good, good. Sandra Young, hi, Sandra, good to see you. Uh, where else? Um, let's see. Um, pa, pa, pa. All right, let us know, let us know. Um, if not, okay, so definitely keep, keep, um, keep using that chat box because uh, I go back and re refer to it after the um, after this this webinar live stream. So let me tell you a little bit about this auction, this estate sale, um, because it really is going to be something special. Uh, this is the a collection of the Buck Alters. Uh, they sort of had a mini love affair, not only with each other, but with, they had a passion for miniatures, and so he was a principal. And she was a sixth grade school teacher. And in their retirement years, they decided to do this together, join this hobby. Uh, they had never really been involved in the miniatures world. This is all kind of new to them. And they both, both found their space within that world, but working together. So he crafted uh, many of the room boxes you see behind me. Uh, and she would commission the artists and, and, and fill them. Um, but they would ideate together and they would work on these pieces together. So there's a colonial room box. There's a King George ballroom. Uh, there is a Victorian uh, a hotel, which could be a boutique. It could be a store. It could be a tea parlor. Anyway, so they worked on these pieces together. And that's what was so special about it, but about this collection. But even more so, uh, what is so special about this collection is that um, they really created a uh, you know, they have, they amassed this wonderful collection in a short period of time over the, I'd say the late 1990s, early 2000s, uh, very high quality uh, pieces. They would commission artists, they would establish relationships with artists, they would, uh, they were patrons of the arts, so they would work with new artists and, and really encourage them to create. And uh, so, so it was really a well-rounded participation uh and, and involvement in this world. And I'm just really privileged to, um, to really usher this collection into new hands. And it, I've been entrusted by the executrix of their estate to handle this, this auction and handle their pieces. Um, so I'm really, really privileged and honored to be able to do this because I want to really honor all of the work that they put into putting this collection together. And I also want to make sure that these pieces are honored like they honored them. So I'm excited. I'm really excited because the collection is amazing. Uh, there are uh, over 200 lots in this auction. Uh, and I'm gonna go into what the terminology is, but there are 200 lots, oh, almost 200 lots, 193 I think we're at, represented by over 100 artists. So there are pieces by over 100 artists in this collection, 40 of whom, more than 40 of whom are either fellows or artisans of the International Guild of Miniature Artisans. So not only are they high quality pieces, but they are high quality pieces from artists who, artisans who have been credentialed by, by IGMA. Uh, so, uh, which just solidifies 
the enormity and the quality of the collection that all these artists are are can be found in this in this one one collection and it's rare to find so many high quality pieces represented by so many uh, great artists in one collection you might go to a show and see some of these artists along with some other artists but never have i seen before and maybe you guys might know better than me um some of you who are on here might know better than me um when we've seen this before i mean what comes to mind for me is Cookie Zemba. That is sort of like the last estate sale, full on estate sale that came to market that had so many great artists in it. So if you guys know, please, I would love to hear from you. Um, I know there are a couple of really great, um, very involved folks on the on this on this right now. So I would love to hear from you. Um, and if I don't get something right, I would love to hear from you. And if you have something to add, I would love to hear from you too, because you're kind of, kind of we have this like tiny little world. So we're all in this together is how I feel. Um, so Barbara is saying she's interested in the mechanics of the bidding in the auction. Yep, we're gonna get to that, how to do it, tips and tricks, and what the bidder's premium is. We're gonna get to all of those and the terminology. Uh, so it is a rare find, I think. I haven't seen it before in my years. Um, I've been involved not that long technically and from a business standpoint probably the next the last eight years um but i've been involved in miniatures for more than 20. um but the other thing about this collection is it's that it's not only is a rare assortment of fine art miniatures uh but it's a rare assortment of fine art miniatures in such great condition so uh these are very quality pieces and the buck altars took beautiful care of their miniatures uh so they're in great condition and we're going to go through assessing condition and things like that when when being involved in an auction and being a bidder. Um, just another note about this auction it is online only. So, you know, traditional auctions, you'd have people in a, in a location and then you might have bidders online and combined. This is online only. So the only way you could participate in this auction is to be online and bid online and um, and, and aim to win these lots online uh, whereas some auctions you might be able to actually see in person uh, the items uh, i do have a preview of some of the items uh, that are in this collection on my youtube channel i don't cover everything because at the end of the day like i said this is many many artists representing over a thousand individual pieces uh, in lots. And so that's the first term. These are lots, which means it could be an individual piece, a chair, a table, or a lot could also mean an assortment of miniatures. And the way I've sort of set up this uh, auction, and, and, and it's not unusual the way I've done this, is, you know, I've put, I've put, I've gathered items together in like, in like as items that would be interest to, interesting to miniaturists. So for instance, there is an assortment of gentlemen like things. So a pair of leather slippers um, that might go along with um, a, a derby hat. I mean, I'm making this up. I believe there is a derby hat in this. Anyway, so there's a lot of gentlemen, uh, of, of gentlemen items, but then there is a singular, a singular uh, desk, which, um, you know, it's a single item and that is considered a lot. So there are almost 200 lots in this auction. Uh, look for um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's, so, so that's what lots are. Um, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen. I have a couple of, of PowerPoint slides to share. And, um, so hopefully everybody can see that, um, everybody can see that slide. If you have any questions, let me know. Definitely. Uh, chat box is open as always. I'm going to try to cover as many as possible. We're a pretty small group. We're, well, we're 30 people, which is usually much smaller than Meet the Miniatures. But I'm going to try to get to as many, if not all, of the questions as possible. Um, Wendy wants to know how we're going to handle how I'm going to handle shipping, which I will let you know. Um, and then, of course, we could ask like ask questions about this because you know the other thing is. I'm a buyer too of miniatures at auctions. So I like to hear what you guys are curious about because it's sort of the same thing I'm curious about. So I sort of set this auction up just as I would as if I was a bidder. So um, yeah, so hopefully I answer all of your questions and I, and I, and I set this up the way, um, the way I would like it to be. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, say to do, the first thing I'm gonna show a very short video about what invaluable is and then valuable is At the host. invaluable we strive to connect people like you with the things they love but we realize it's not always practical for collectors to sift through hundreds of catalogs or travel to an auction house in search of the perfect object so 
We've partnered with over 5,000 premier auction houses and galleries to create the leading online marketplace for fine art, antiques, and collectibles. With Invaluable, collectors have the world's treasures at their fingertips, bidding in global auctions from the comfort of their own homes. Here's how it works. First, visit invaluable.com to find something you'd like to bid on. You can then use advanced search filters for item type, location, and more, or set up a keyword alert to get emails when matching items are added to the site. Once you've found an item you're interested in, you'll need to register to bid in the auction. Registration includes entering your shipping address and credit card details. The auction house will then review your information and send you an email once you're eligible to start placing bids. Once you're approved, you can finally start bidding. You can place bids ahead of the auction start time or bid in real time while the auction is happening. Join over 200,000 collectors already on our platform and create your invaluable account today. Okay, so that's just um, the basic setup for Invaluable, which is the host for this auction. Um, they're a very reputable site. I've used them before. I've purchased um, online with them before. Think of it sort of a high-end eBay, if you will. It's um, and, and really, they basically um, cater more towards the art houses and galleries and auction houses like Sotheby's and, um, and Christie's. So you know, you have to be an accredited auction house or gallery or store to be on their platform. So the first thing you want to do is set up an account with Invaluable, which is super easy. You go on invaluable.com, you, you fill out one of these forms, you put your address in, and mo most importantly, you want to put your credit card information in. And the reason why is because your registration to bid goes basically to me. It's really, I'm a one-man show. <laughs> um, and I approve that registration so that you can bid on the auction. And the, the, the main drivers for how I approve is to is so that you're committing in somehow, some way with your credit card. Doesn't mean you, I'm gonna use your credit card. It just means you're serious about bidding um, on this auction. Um, and, I'm, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, payment and all of that and how credit card does impact that. But in, in essence, this is your registration to bid. It, it tells me I should trust you to participate in this auction and the credit card information sort of solidifies that, that, um, that uh, um, belief that you, you, you're trusted. Does that make sense? So super easy to set up an account, go in and set up an account, use your information. The, the next really important piece is, um, and for anybody who wants to participate in an online auction, um, is you want to make sure you read through the conditions and the uh, the terms. To get to the conditions and terms, there's a little button there. Uh, once you uh, register and you get online and you you uh, look for the auction, look for my auction under D. Thomas Fine Miniatures, click on it, um, and you'll see there's a there's a button that that brings you to the auction details. You wanna make sure you read the conditions. The conditions um, include things like a buyer's premium and a buyer's premium is essentially an additional charge over and above what you bid that gets charged against that item if you win it that covers costs like administration, listing fees and things like that. So it's an extra tag on cost to your final purchase. It's very standard in the art and auction world. Um, Buyers' premiums go up as high as 25, 30%, some as low as one or 10%. So it's all different. Um, in the miniatures world, I mean, in our world where we play, 23% is pretty standard. If you look at other auctions that have happened online with miniatures. Um, this is also where you'll, you'll find the shipping and handling um, uh, details. What happens and how shipping and handling gets applied, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about in, in a bit. Um, also this, this, these these uh, 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 terms and conditions include very importantly that when you bid, this is a this is a um, this is a contract that you will purchase. Okay, it, it is a it is a contract between us that if you bid on something and you win that, you 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 will buy it. <laughs> and this goes back to the credit card information, which is technically I I have the right, and I I hate that, but I do based on this contract, if you bid, um, that if, if you don't pay the invoice after four days, I can charge you a credit card. I don't like to do that. I don't want to charge you for something that you don't want ultimately, but this is, this is going to be all about communication at the end of the day. And my communication link is so open 
you know, so we can chat. Um, if there's a real, real reason why you decided not to buy something, let me know. But I ultimately have the choice whether or not to charge you. Um, but I, other important things on the conditions is that I do expect invoices to be paid within 24 hours. And you can expect to get an invoice after winning an item within 24 hours. And then I expect I will ship everything out between seven and 10 days. So as you can imagine, this is a big auction, almost 200 lots. It's a lot of shipping and it's basically just me. So give me at least a week to get everything out. Um, and then finally, oh, two things, something called bidding increments. So uh, the way I have set up this auction is that if there's something, bidding increments, it, it, bidding increments are the, um, the price increases uh, that get applied after each bid. So for instance, if an item is tracking between zero and $99 and you bid on it, the bidding increment will be $10. So for every person that goes in and bids, $10 is the bidding increment within that, that cost between zero and $90, $99. And then, so for instance, anything that is tracking between $100 and $499, the bidding increments will be $25, which means you have to bid and, and, and you'll have to bid within those bidding increments. Otherwise, we'd be here all day. Uh, if something was $5 and you're just basically, something is um, $500 and you want to bid you want to bid $5 more, we'd be here forever. So that's bidding increments. Any questions so far on bidding increments, terms, conditions, buyer's premium? Um, a little bit of, I'm going to talk a little bit more about shipping handling in a second. Uh, about registration. Okay. You guys are good. I don't see. Oh, please also come and help me. Out. Yeah, I got that. Got that, Wendy. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So, so, so this auction right now has started. So the catalog with all of its lots are already available and visible online, which means you can see all 200 lots. That is the catalog. This is an online catalog. Some people were confused about the catalog. And you know, in the old days, you would get a printed catalog in the mail. We don't do that anymore. Everything is online. Um, so here's the catalog. It is out there. The auction has actually started for all intent and purposes. You can actually go and bid. If you've registered and I've approved you to participate, you can go in and bid right now. It's, it's um, you can go bid. So you can go place your bid. Um, you can place your, uh, 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 I'm going to talk about uh, placing a bid. So it, let's say you review the catalog. You love these, this little flower assortment. You can go in and, and place your bid and put in how much you want, you would spend for that, how much you would like to spend for that item. The, the system will ask you a couple of things before you actually um, click place bid. Um, it will ask you, it, it will it will sort of give you a heads up to say, hey, are you sure this is um, what you want to bid? It will suggest the maximum bid. So in other words, if you really, really want this, this the system is saying you should put the maximum bid in. The maximum bid is uh, that it suggests is 80% of the lowest estimated cost that I have put in the system that I have judged this item to be. So for example... This is not a good example, but let's say um, let's say the estimated. Uh, so every every a lot will have an estimated low and high uh, projected price. So let's say this flower, these this uh, this assortment of flowers, I have a projection of hundred between one hundred and two hundred dollars. The system, when you go and put in a bid, will will generate an estimate. Uh, of 80% somewhere between the lower and the higher price saying, basically, if you really want this, you need to go in at this amount. You don't have to do that. You can go put in anything you want um, as a max bid. Uh, but the other thing is if you go really, really, really high on the max bid um, that, you know, you put your highest price that you feel like you would pay for this item doesn't necessarily mean that's what you will pay. It just means that um, if some, Someone has to match that price or go above it to beat you. Does that make sense? Let me see if I got any question. The site will tell you what next will be calculating the bid increment for you. Yes. So Wendy is saying the site will, is, is asking, but also saying, yes. So the site will tell you what the next bid needs to be, and it will calculate the increment for you. So the site will, you put in $100 and the site will go, 
Uh, nope, somebody else has bid 100 and actually it won't tell you. It will tell you that someone has outbid you. They won't tell you what that other person has bid, but it'll basically tell you what you need to, um, what you what bid you need to place in order for you to be the highest bidder on that item, okay? Um, so once you, you place your bid and that, like I said, that can happen now, that is happening now. You can go back in the system and the system will tell you, uh, you can see right here, it will tell you what your status is, whether you're the highest bidder, where you've been outbid. And you can always go and look at where your bidding status is on this. Once you sign up and you have an account and you go into this auction, um, you can see in this little pull down menu, all the things that you're bidding on and where you're at on it in terms of whether you've been outbid or if you're the current high bidder. Okay. So it's, this is super, super, super easy to use. I just have to say it's very easy to use. And this is what's happening now. This is what is happening now. This auction is live. It's, I mean, this auction is going on right now. Bidding is happening right now. The auction goes live on Sunday and that's when next Sunday, and that's when final bidding happens and we award the, the highest price bidder for each item. Any questions so far? Um, so what's good about the auction being live right now is let's say you don't, you can't make it next Sunday. Uh, you can't be and you can't watch it live. You can't bid live. You can, and you love an item or several items. You can go in and place your maximum bid and pray <laughs> that you have put in the most number that no one can match. Um, so that's a, 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 what, what you could do with this bidding process. You can go and be an absentee bidder uh, and you can place your bid in the system. It will hold it. And if no one outbids you next Sunday, you will be the winner. Okay. Oh, and what's also really great about the system is once you place a bid, uh, you can ask the system to alert you by text what the status is. So let's say you want that beautiful table. You put in a maximum bid of $250. And right now, you know, the, the, the highest price right now is, is at hundred and you, you remain the highest bidder then the, the system will tell you you're the highest bidder, but if someone comes in and outbids you, it will tell you you've been outbid all the way up until Sunday of next week, like two hours before, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but um, it will tell you uh, you've been outbid. So Wendy, if two bidders bid the same, the first person wins another advantage of proxy bidding, right? I'm not really sure. I don't, I don't, I don't know what happens if two bidders bid the same. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Wendy. I'm reading this right. If two bidders bid the same, the first person wins. No, because um, um, there can only be one bid by one bidder in the system at a time. It's the highest bidder. There cannot be two bidders with the same bid. Um, I believe that happens if you have uh, uh, an auction happening live at, in person and online at the same time. There can be two bids. But I believe if, if that happens, the floor bidder takes the take precedent, but I'm not sure. But in this case, you will only have one bidder at any time who has the highest bid. Did I answer your question, Wendy? Um, if you decide to be an absentee bidder and you put a max in and you're the highest bidder, you will remain the highest bidder all the way through until, until at what time somebody outbids you. Okay. Um, okay. So that's happening now all the way through to Sunday. Sunday comes and you've registered, you've gone through the catalog, you've read all the terms and conditions, you're comfortable with the um, with 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 bidding. Um, you know, you when you open up your wait, I'm going back to Wendy. Okay, but the second bidder has to top it or the original bidder gets it. That is correct. Yes, if the second bidder, the second bidder has to top the original bidder in order to win it. Correct. Correct, correct, correct. So glad I know the answer. <laughs> um, so this will happen all week. Sunday rolls around. You bid, you've bid. you done all of what you need to do. You've been approved to, to bid. Auction day, you log on to your computer. You want to make sure you have a really good connection. You want to get yourself settled and seated. Uh, this can take a while. Um, 200 lots. I'm averaging between 30 seconds and one minute for each lot. So I think this auction will go about three and a half hours. Uh, so 
you know, settle in, um, get yourself settled, sign on, make sure everything looks good. Your console, once you sign up, you will have a, you will have a pop-up that will be, that will ask you if you want to enter the, the, the live auction, a little red button, you'll enter. Um, and, and, and one of the, and the first item will come up and it will, it will say, uh, what the item is. It'll have a picture of the item and it'll give you an opportunity to bid. If you look at the little green button, it says bid now, it'll tell you what you need to bid in order to win that item. So, and like, and, and like I said, um, this, this is, um, each lot's going to take 30 seconds to a minute. It's going to go fast. Um, I don't, I don't like to, I don't like to linger. I'm not waiting. I, I believe if my personal opinion is if you want this, you're going to bid, you're not going to, you're not going to wait. Um, and I don't think people want to sit there and wait until people fight it out. This is my belief. Be quick, be very quick because I'm not going to let this thing go and go and go. So if you really want it bid, um, but you will know when I'm getting ready to move on because I will, you will see a little, uh, a, a little message come up and it'll say something like, uh, it will say something like, um, I don't know the words. I can't find fair warning will come up. And that's my warning. It's like sort of like the going once, going twice will come up and you will be warned that the this this lot is moving on to another one. So be quick. Um, okay, so auction day. The other thing is if it, uh, you know, you don't have to sit through the whole thing. If there are I, that's why I really I, I encourage you to look through the entire catalog. Because let's say there really isn't something you want until the middle of the catalog. Like you, you don't want anything until like lot 100. And I've tried to organize this uh, auction as user-friendly as possible. So, you know, I put all the art dolls mostly together. I put the furniture together. I put artisans together. So I basically put things together like I would want it, how I would shop. Might not be optimal for you, but I tried so that you don't have to sit through everything. So if there's something more towards the middle to late part of the auction, you don't have to sign on at 10 o'clock. You could sign on at 11 o'clock Eastern time uh, and, and come in a little later. So you can log on at any time. Barbara's saying, are the lots auctioned off a numerical order or of lot number? Yes. So lot number one will go first. Lot number 193, which I think is the last one, will go last. Um, some auctioneers like to play with that. I don't, it's going to stay in that order. So yes. Yeah, so you can assume, you know, assume, like I said, 30 seconds to a minute, you know? So, you know, if you're really not starting to bid till hundred, you really don't have to sign on right away. Okay. Um, okay. So you're going to look another thing on the, on the, on the, con on your console is you're going to get to see what's coming up. So the little boxes below show you what's coming up so you can get ready. And also you can go backwards and click on and see, well, how did that do? Well, you know, if let's say you won something you want to go back and see, Oh, what did I just win again? <laughs> how much did I pay? So you can go back and look. So the, the screen is very simple, very easy to use. You can go forward, you can go back, and then you can join the auction live back to this screen at any point. Very, very user friendly. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, no, 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 no. Fair warning. Okay. The other thing to, to note is, like I said, remember I said I put in what I believe an estimated range will be for each item. So let's say this, these flowers, I think is going to go between somewhere between 100 and 200. Just know that that is just an estimate, kids. We never know what's going to happen in one of these auctions. You can have somebody, you know, there are a lot of different things that that make the value of some of these items. A lot of it is very emotionally driven. Some of it is very practically driven. So what I put in as estimate is really just an estimate. Sometimes these, we get blown away by, by how well something does. And sometimes we get blown away by how poorly something does in terms of, you know, but how lucky someone else gets by getting something at a lower price. So Estimates are just that, estimates, but also note that this, uh, there is something called a reserve and a reserve price is um, a, an absolute price that an item needs to achieve in order for me to agree to sell it. In this auction, the bidding, the starting, the start bidding price is the reserve price. Most items in this, uh, uh, in this collection have very, very low starting prices. And that is the minimum price you need to put in as a bid. 
However, there are about 12 items or more. Very, um, very, they're all beautiful pieces in this collection, but there are some items that I do have a very high starting price. It's not even the reserve. It's just a high starting price. Um, I didn't want to scare anybody, but, you know, I have some really, really fabulous pieces in this, in this um, auction. And I, I, I couldn't start it. I couldn't risk as if that's as if I couldn't risk it not selling at a certain price. So does that make sense? Um, do you sign on to join the auction, even if you are registered to bid? Um, are, do you sign on to join the auction, even if you are registered to bid? I don't, I, Barbara, you have to answer that, ask that question again. I don't think I understand it. You do sign on to get into the auction. Um, the only way you, you, you can sign on and, and you can't watch the auction unless you register. You have to register to watch the auction live. I hope that answers your question. Um, so, so that's that's essentially it um, in terms of how you get on Invaluable. Uh, oh, shipping. Let's talk a little bit about shipping. I want to talk about shipping. So, and invoicing. So, you have been so um, happy that you won. Let's say one 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 lot or several lots. You can expect an invoice within 24 hours. I will be assigning shipping, insurance, and handling costs to each lot um, in during the invoicing process. The estimated costs for that are in the shipping terms in that little box I told you about. You can go, go review it. I'm shipping USPS for most items. I will be requiring signature uh, upon delivery for some items over a certain amount of money. So there will be a cost involved in that. And that is, uh, that will all be in the invoice, shipping, handling, insurance, and uh, signature due upon delivery charges. Uh, so that will all be in there. That will be assigned to the invoice and will be sent to you guys within 24 hours. I am going to be bundling shipping. So let's say you win five, six, seven lots. I will be bundling all of them together and assigning one, one shipping, handling, and insurance charge to your invoice. So you'll look for that. Um, those will probably take me a little longer to get. You, you know, the, the guys who are, who are purchasing multiple lots, it's going to take me a little time to figure out how much it's going to cost to ship you. But general ideas are in the shipping charges. You know, if it's a five by five box, depending on how heavy that is, can be anywhere from, uh, you know, 475 to 875 kind of thing. And then as the box gets bigger, you know, uh, five to eight dollars, eight to twelve dollars, and twelve dollars plus. International. I am letting people from international in on this, but I am requiring that that we ship FedEx with signatures and and air only. I'm not. I don't trust our own USPS. So international. So uh, if you win and you're international, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that we that you pay for a FedEx to get this get this to you. Um. Okay, so Barbara, if you're already registered to bid and bidding now, on September 19th, do you have to sign on a different join? Um, no, if you're already registered to bid and you're bidding right now, you don't have to sign in on Sunday. If you're comfortable with your max bid and you're not going to join on Sunday, uh, then, you know, Monday morning you'll wake up or Sunday afternoon you'll get a text that will say you either won it or you have been outbid. Does that answer your question? So you don't have to join. That's what that's what's so good about the system uh, of of bidding now and putting in your max bid and you know going through the catalog. You don't have to sit through four hours or three and a half hours of of auction. Uh, if you know you want something and this is how much you this is your max, how much you're going to spend, and you're not going to spend a penny more, but you really really want it, you don't have to actually sit through the auction. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, I can't believe this is going. Okay, so that that is any other questions before we go through some tips and tricks. I know it's 7 a.m. in California. It's an early start for you. <laughs> I know. You know, timing on these auctions are it's an art to try to figure out how to do this, when to do it. I know it's gonna be tough for you guys in California. It's 7 a.m. wake up. Um, it's tough. I don't know. I battled with doing it on a Saturday or Sunday, a weekday, Ugh. but um. Yeah, Sunday just feels right. And the morning, better. I don't know. Okay. Could have done it a little later, but then people start their days and they start to do their chores and when they go to church or wherever. So it's hard. Um, okay. Tips and tricks. Let's talk about tips and tricks. And so what you want to do, if this is all new to you, 
uh, I would recommend registering for another auction and going and see how one runs. Go see another auction live. Go get yourself registered and approved to bid on some other auction and go see it out to see how it works. It's really fun to see it live, how the, the items come up and you know you click the button and you it's just, it's fun. It really is fun. Um, know the catalog. Uh, I would say definitely go and review the lots, read the descriptions, look at the photographs, know how much you're willing to spend know how much something is is um valued at i mean my the value i assign to each item is my opinion and that's also in the terms and conditions but you might have a different opinion so i recommend you go looking at especially the things that you want to buy um look deeply into those and send me a note uh if if there's something you have a question about let's say you really want that beautiful piano that be that beautiful piano by the way does not have a signature on it um and that's in that's in the description but you might have a question about that send me questions before you before you bid on something. Uh, review past auctions to see what things might be worth. It's it's not a science, uh, but it gives you an idea. You know, what is a, a Johann Landman's painting go for? Uh, what should I be paying for it? But a lot of times what you should be paying has nothing <laughs> to do with what you actually pay. Miniatures are a very emotional category. You want something, you're going to pay as much as you can for that because you want it. Um, so Wendy is saying, can you explain about favoriting items? Do you get reminders for favorites? I don't think you get, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't think so. Um, I don't think you get reminders. I think when you go in and look at the catalog, it tells you what you've reminded, uh, what you've uh, of, of highlighted, but I don't think you get reminded necessarily, but it's a good question. I do encourage you, if you really have very specific questions to call and valuable, they are very uh, very um, open, like they, they're they very accommodating. They answer questions, not only for the, for, you know, the, the auction houses, but for the bidders as well. So check, oh, check the, I, I maybe, the other reason why I, I say check the catalog. Oh, okay. The other thing is check the catalog, uh, know the terms and conditions. Um, the other thing is I'm gonna be sending an, an automated email a day or two before Sunday repeating a lot of what I'm saying here, check the terms and conditions, et cetera, et cetera. And I will be highlighting any changes that I might have made uh, since I launched this catalog. For instance, I may be adding a couple of lots. I don't expect to be adding a lot, trust me, but I might be adding a couple more. Um, I don't expect to be changing the terms and conditions. I, I, I won't be changing the terms and conditions, but I will be highlighting what those changes might be. Uh, so you want to read that note. You want to read it. Uh, the other thing is use uh, use the photo the photographs to your advantage. I took high quality photographs of every item. You'll be able to blow them up and review them. Uh, so I will, uh, you know. So so you know, do your homework. Blow these images up. Look for the detail. Uh, make sure you know what you're buying. Uh, so so do that. Um, do I have a number for invaluable? I don't. Um, I would just Google invaluable.com. Or when you get the registration, your registration note should have the number on it. Uh, I would do that. Ask me questions. Send me emails. Uh, I will be answering emails and answering questions up to two hours before on Sunday. So that's 5 a.m. your time, Barbara. <laughs> if you want to get up and ask me questions. And finally, oh, that's it. The finally was... Uh, the reminder that I'm going to be sending. Um, okay, so let's go in. Let, any other questions about how to bid, online auctioning, uh, before I, I talk about, you know, what to look for in a fine miniature? Um, I'll wait one second, because it usually takes a little time when people type before a question comes up. Um, all right, I'll go back to it. If you have any questions, still, I'm, I'm here to answer. How to spot a fine miniature? What makes a fine miniature? And I am open to hearing what uh, what you guys have to say, if there's anything you have to add. Eleanor is saying on their site, EST price, what does that mean? Okay, so uh, Eleanor, the EST price is the estimated price. That is the assumption that I make uh, for each item and each lot for what I believe the final bidding price will be. And it is by no means, uh, it is it is an estimate. It is a... Um, 
It is a thought. It is an art creating that. We don't, we don't never really know what something is going to end up being, but this is just a, is an estimate of what I believe that item will go for. Um, if, you, if you looked at the catalog already, some of my estimates have been blown away, which I don't know how to feel about that. That's good. That's bad. Um, you know, some things we've already re overachieved the estimate. It That just gives you uh, a sense for the excitement for, for these items and the energy that people have for some of these things that they've, they've bid up already. Um, so that's what EST is, the estimate. What makes a fine miniature? And I am open to hearing what, uh, what you guys have to say, if there's anything you have to add. Eleanor is saying on their site, EST price, what does that mean? Okay, so uh, Eleanor, the EST price is the estimated price. That is the assumption that I make uh, for each item and each lot for what I believe the final bidding price will be. And it is by no means, uh, it, is, it is an estimate. It is a, um, it is a thought, it is an art creating that. We don't, we don't never really know what something is gonna end up being, but this is just a, is an estimate of what I believe that item will go for. Um, if, you, if you looked at the catalog already, some of my estimates have been blown away, which I don't know how to feel about that. That's good, that's bad. Um, you know, some things we've already re overachieved the estimate. It That just gives you uh, a sense for the excitement for, for these items and the energy that people have for some of these things that they've, they've bid up already. Um, so that's what EST is, the estimate. Let's talk about what makes a fine miniature. So first and foremost, uh, scaling, size, and proportion is really one of the key drivers, I believe, and realism for um, what makes a fine miniature. So this is a beautiful chair by Nancy Summers. Uh, I believe this was made in 1998. This is one of the items that are up. There's a pair of these that are up for sale. So scaling size proportion is going to really be a driver. Uh, accuracy of dimension, scaling down to full size. Uh, uh, you know, how real does that item look is really what makes the difference between the dollhouse play toys and a fine miniature. Um, the other thing, and I'm going to show you another chair. This is by Neil Bateson. This also is a pair that is um, that is by Neil Bateson. It's one of the lots. I'm not sure which number. This was this was made in 2000. Another thing that's really interesting, and who, I heard this from, uh, oh my god, the the uh, I heard this from another group, miniaturist. I learned this from them. But essentially, it's something called scale weight. It's how heavy something feels in your hand. And granted, you can't feel these and see these, but just put in the back of your head how something feels in your hand and how weighty it is or not weighty it is, is an important driver of what makes a fine miniature. If it feels too light, then maybe it's not made of real material, which we're going to talk about materials in a second. Um, and, and, you know, maybe it didn't, doesn't use the same techniques and, and uh, methods to make. So you want to, you want to have something that's weighty, not too weighty or not, not weighty enough, because maybe it was 3D printed, maybe it was laser cut, maybe it was made of, of wood, you know, wood composite versus hardwood, which is another real driver for what makes a fine miniature is uh, whether or not the materials used are traditionally used for the full scale equivalent. So for example, and this is one of my favorite items in the whole wide, <laughs> look at that. This is a comfy chair by Lynn Wiesenant, also made in 2000. This is made of leather, this is leather. So it's using traditional uh, materials to make this to make this chair, so that's what that's what makes it different from a, a from that's what makes it a fine scale miniature. Um, the other thing you want to look at is um, what is the educational background for some of these artists. Um, you know, before you buy something, you want to do a little bit of hit, of of homework, especially for the for the finer pieces like this lovely piece by Neil Bateson. He is definitely one of my favorite artists in this. Uh, in this auction, this beautiful chest of drawers. It's crazy. So he was, um, or is, and I'm trying to find out more information from him and nobody knows anything about him. He was an art, uh, he was an antique furniture restorer in full scale, making miniatures back in 2000. So, you know, the, the their background, their training is also really important. Uh, it's not the only thing because there are people 
you know, who are in their basements, who are, you know, welders, I'm making this up in real life, but they're making beautiful miniatures in their basement. So it's not the only thing, but it's something to look for. This is a beautiful hand-painted cabinet, uh, chest of drawers, credenza, commode. I'm not sure what to call this. I just know it's beautiful. Made by Natasha Beshenkovsky. So Natasha was, um, she's Russian and um, she studied at the Moscow Art School of the Academy of Fine Arts. That's a lot of words. So something to look for. What is the background? What is the training? Um, what is the credentialing behind this miniaturist? Uh, so clearly she's talented because look at this piece. Just look at it. It's just beautiful. Um, and there are a number of Natasha Beshenkovsky pieces in this uh um, in this auction. The other thing you want to look for is a signature. And that's probably really important. Natasha signs all her pieces. She doesn't always date them, but dating is important. This is dated 1995. Um, I don't know the level of importance about dating. It's always nice to know when something is dated, especially if, if uh, there are certain artisan pieces that came maybe later on. Maybe the artisan has improved their techniques. Maybe they haven't been making that very long. So a date helps. But if you love the piece and you like the artist, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Does not matter. Doesn't matter when they made it. You want it. Um, but it is something to look at. Signatures, artisan signatures and dates. And then next is, we talked a little bit about credentialing. Uh, and, and the Guild of Miniature Artisans is really the only credentialing organization in the world that I know of that is actually actively um, creating artisans and fellows of the guild, that there is an extensive process by which these artists go through to become credentialed as an artisan. Um, and one of those artists is, is, is uh, uh, Michael Walton. And he made this unbelievably beautiful drum table. He is an artisan of the guild. Um, and so another thing to look for in a fine miniature is, is what are the materials being used? What are the techniques that were that are used to make this, this, this piece? In this case, Michael used uh, traditional hardwoods. I think it's cherry wood. There's beautiful inlay work. That some pieces have marquetry in miniature. This happens to have a leather top on it. Uh, opening drawers, working pieces. That's another really important element is the level of realism. Do the drawers actually work? Um, do the hinges actually hinge? Uh, you know, do the artists actually make the hinges? Did they buy the hinges? Are they off the shelf? Things like that. But one of the really key things, especially with um, hardwood furniture is you're gonna wanna look for the dovetailing and you really, I can't really see here but dovetailing is traditional joinery whereby, uh, you know, in full scale furniture, joinery is the connectors between two pieces. So dovetailing is when you cut the pieces of the drawer and you snap them together and you glue them for a really good hold. So one of the really great things about a fine miniature piece of furniture specifically, if it has dovetailing, you know that that artisan went the extra step to really craft that piece well using traditional techniques. And that's something that's gonna last a long time because you know, you're getting that glued fit that's beautiful. So that's, that's Michael Walton, materials and techniques. Uh, important to, to think about how something was made. Um, I try as much as possible in my descriptions to add all of this so that it gives you the information you need before making a decision of whether or not to bid on something and buy something. If there's something I'm missing, send me a note. I want to hear, and I will update the post. Um, I will update it. So another couple of things, um, you know, in terms of uh, uh, quality, um, techniques, is, it, I don't know what this calls. I just wanted to share it. <laughs> this is from, this is a beautiful hand-painted portrait. It is a reproduction um, by Johannes Landman. He is an amazing uh, Igma artisan. Uh, and, you know, I guess, I guess the, the word here is, I guess the, the, the detail here is, you know, did the artist give the original artist the right credit? Um, is it dated? Is it signed? Things like that. Those are important. It, they're important pieces to the puzzle, uh, whether or not you're fit, you're, you're trying to, you know, decide whether or not something is fine. And then I, I want to go back a little bit to 
uh, scale weight and also give you an, opp give an opportunity to show one more piece. <laughs> this is a soup terrain by, um, I, yeah, Peter Cuisto, uh, Igma Fellow. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. If you, uh, and I didn't have weights put in my descriptions, I should have, um, but this has a beautiful weight to it. You would only imagine, you would imagine this in real life being a heavy piece. And so even in miniature, it's got a beautiful, beautiful weight to it. And you wanna look for that when you're looking at a fine miniature. Um, the other thing is, is there a story behind these uh, artists, these pieces? Has this, have there been writ stories written about them? Um, have they been published? Have people talked about them? Have they been shared and shown somewhere important? Uh, it raises the profile of the miniature, the artist, the piece itself. Uh, and then finally, well, not finally, two more things. Two more things is you want to also look at the seller, the reseller, me. Um, you know, do your homework. Who am I? Do I have a good reputation? Uh, do I have good, good, um, uh, uh, do I have a good reputation? Do I have, you know, no bad comments online? Do I have a bad online presence kind of thing? You want to make sure that you're buying from someone who's reputable. Um, so check your, your, the, the, the auction house and check me out. I don't know where you'd find anything negative on me, but <laughs> good luck. Okay, finally, 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 if you really want to get do all of your homework, there is this awesome book. It's called A Reference Guide to Miniature Makers Marks. So most of the really great miniaturists up until like the late 90s are here in this book. I wish somebody would create a second edition to this uh, because we need it. Uh, but another really good resource is on Facebook, there is a group called uh, miniature makers identification source. It's a Facebook group. I know pay Facebook is very polarized these days, but um, there it's a great resource. They're very accommodated. They're very responsive. They will answer your questions. Let's say you have a, a you have a piece that you want to find out more about them. There might be someone on that site who can answer your questions or send me the question, um, and I'm happy to answer it. My my um, I have an open email. I, you can even call me. My, my phone number is somewhere on my website. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to this, this uh, event. I'm just, like I said, I'm really, really um, excited about what's coming up. I'm excited about this auction. I'm, I was thrilled to be uh, putting this collection together on behalf of this couple, on behalf of the executives of the estate. Um, and, I, you know, I, I'm going to be, it's going to be sad to say goodbye to all of these um, these uh, miniatures because I've had, I've been able to spend the last few months with them. So the name of this Facebook site again is the uh, Facebook site is Miniature Makers Identification Source. It's a, a Facebook group uh, of that group regarding worth of minis. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's it, Marcella. Um, thank you, Barbara. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys being here. So any other questions before we sign off? But like I said, I'm open to answering more questions even after this. Uh, it is a beautiful collection. And um, I, like I said, I'm gonna be sad to let it go. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, they were wonderful people and you could really tell, you know, when I was putting this collection together, I kind of like channeled them and I channeled their excitement about waiting for miniatures to arrive in the mail and all that great stuff. So this will, um, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel unless you want to go back and refer to it, um, but it will be there. I look forward to seeing everybody next weekend on, on Sunday, and I'll have more information on upcoming Meet the Miniaturists and all that kind of stuff. And um, But until then, uh, I'm going to stop sharing for now. I will, um, hold on, I want to up my screen. So yeah, if, if you guys need to get in touch with me, you know where to find me. Thank you for joining. I appreciate everybody being here. Have a great rest of your night and rest of your week. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.